Welcome to r slash petty revenge, where the revenge is small, but the satisfaction is huge. <laughs> My petty revenge story is a little gross, so I apologize in advance. I have a sensitivity slash intolerance to most meats. Red meat is the worst, and beef is particularly bad. Doctors recommend I try to get my protein from alternative sources if possible. So I've happily been a vegetarian since I was 13 or so. When I was younger, my aunt didn't believe the doctors and thought I was just being fussy. We come from a meat and potatoes town, so she had plenty of friends backing her up on this. This is the same aunt who convinced my parents I was faking asthma. Turns out I wasn't. Shocker. And also refused to get her own daughter glasses because she thought she just wanted them for attention. She later discovered her daughter's eyesight was atrocious. Another shocker, I know. The whole family regularly had dinner together, taking turns hosting. When it was my aunt's turn to host, she assured me my burger was meatless. As you probably guessed, it was not. I was starving that night and gulped down my beef burger first. My aunt was smiling, and I thought it was simply because I liked her cooking. Looking back, I realized her little smirk was because she thought she had caught me in a lie or achieved whatever her endgame was. Well, a few minutes passed and I got that familiar, unpleasant feeling in my stomach. It was then that I realized what she had done and why she was smiling. When I eat meat, I almost always get sick. I just can't hold it down. So when it came time to kneel before the porcelain throne, I decided to stay put. I instead took aim at my aunt, who was seated beside me at the head of the table. Then we've got this exchange down in the comments. You left out the best part, her reaction. And OP says, it was a while ago, but I remember her being immediately furious and trying to get me in trouble. Her husband, my uncle, then outed her by basically yelling, I told you so, because he had apparently tried to talk her out of giving me the burger and she had refused to listen to him. When it was clear everyone disagreed with her actions, she dropped it entirely. <laughs> so what are we having for desserts? Well, OP will be serving just desserts. Our next Reddit post is from ASDF QWERTY. I was trying to find a parking spot at my university. The lot was notoriously crowded, but my campus didn't have a lot of options. While searching, I saw a Corvette taking up four prime spots near the front of the lot. After about 10 minutes of waiting slash looking for a spot, one opened up towards the back of the lot. Furious at the nerve of the driver being so inconsiderate, I wrote a note saying, Sorry I hit your car, you probably won't even notice the damage, and left it on their windshield. When I got out of class and was headed back to my car, I saw a very stereotypical college-age Corvette owner frantically searching their vehicle while yelling into their phone. I don't know who they were talking to, but I feel bad for them having to deal with this person. <laughs> OP, this is incredible psychological warfare because he'll never know for sure what happened. Every dent or scratch he finds, he'll think, well, maybe this was from something else, and he'll keep searching. Our next Reddit post is from Deli Asin. I was out to a movie with my friend last night. We come and sit down and I realize pretty soon that this girl in the row behind us has her feet up on my friend David's seat. She's there with one of her friends. So David turns around and he says something like, uh, do you think you could put your feet down? And I think they say something in response, but I didn't hear it. The feet didn't go down. A few minutes later, David says, hey, will you get your feet off my chair? It's extremely rude and they still don't budge. So I tell Dave that he should go find an employee and get them to talk to this girl. He does exactly that, and after a couple of minutes, an employee comes and talks to this girl. She's obviously pretty peeved, but begrudgingly agrees to put her feet down. After the employee leaves, she puts her feet right back up. At this point, I'm pissed off. Why is it so important to you that you have your feet up on someone's chair? You're just being a brat. So I get out of my seat, walk up two rows, sit down in the seat directly behind this girl and stick my foot on the back of her chair and push it forward. They both turn around and try to say something to me, but I can't really hear them since the movie started by this point. So I just say, just watch the movie. I kept my feet up there the entire movie. It felt like I'd done wall sits for two hours, but I'm glad I did it. And we have a similar story from Dog Food Enforcer in the comments. 
Luckily, I haven't had this happen in a theater, but I have had it happen a couple times on planes. One time, the person had bare feet. I made a point to let loose the loudest and wettest sneeze of my life all over their bare feet. That did the job. And then another post from Deleted. Happened to me once. I licked my hand and rubbed it on her foot. She said something and my, <laughs> and my only reply was, sorry, foot fetish. She moved seats. Our next Reddit post is from Neon Tonsil. Four years ago, I'm cashiering at a Wacky Mart on a register that holds all the smokes and alcohol. It's 10 p.m. and these two young men, early 20s, come up to the counter. They have three random novelty items. I don't remember what they were. But it wasn't strange and unusual to get odd items this late at night. Maybe it was for some fraternity? I don't know. It's a college town, so I get weird stuff from frats a lot. I scan the items and tell them their total is $22 and some amount of cents. Grinning at each other, they reach into their jackets and slam down two gallon Ziploc bags full of only pennies. I stare them in the eye, but they didn't even look back at me. Everyone else in line groans and went to other registers. These two kids knew what they were doing, but they didn't know what they were in for because I was prepared for this. I knew this was going to inevitably happen. I grinned with them because I was going to get paid during this. These pranksters are here for recreation. This conversation occurs between me, the ringleader, the other guy was silent and awkward, and a friendly coworker of mine. Is this $22 in X cents? The ringleader doesn't say anything. Did you count it? Nope. Are you going to? Nope. Is it at least $22 in X cents? Don't know. Nice. My coworker says, hey, you guys can use the self checkout. It can take all your coins at once. I say, oh, don't worry about it, coworker. And the ringleader says, nope, don't trust them, lady. And his partner laughs. What? Why? Doesn't count all of your change right. I've used them before. It really works. And I say to my coworker, I got this. I unpacked the Ziplocs and threw all the pennies on the counter. It was a beautiful, massive poo storm of a mess, and I digged in. I was Frank in a dumpster in It's Always Sunny. The two, still averting my gaze, start chuckling as if they're taking away my dignity. They whisper to each other, dude, oh my god, dude, yeah, dude, hilarious. I counted each penny one by one. My coworker comes up to me. My coworker says, guess I'll help you count this. Don't worry about it. She looks at me confused, then she puts on her get down to busy look. I got your back. Oh, okay. We worked up a system where we counted 10, put them in a pile, then with 10 stacks of 10 pennies, we separated them, making $1 piles. We made progress slowly, but surely. Some customers came to the line, but we advised them to get to another line. Some of them looked at us confused, but when they saw the counter full of pennies, they understood. Some decided to wait, but when they realized it wasn't going to take just a few minutes, they took their leave. Another register in the liquor department opened, so it wasn't too bad for other customers. We get to about $12, about 10 minutes in, until I knocked over the piles. My coworker shouted my name in surprise. Oops, sorry. My coworker looks at my grin. I give her a wink and tilt my head, motioning her to leave. You know what? I think I better let you do this. Ha, huh, all right. <laughs> my coworker leaves. I look at the two guys. They're absolutely stunned at the fallen pile of pennies. Yeah, I'm going to have to count all these again. Okay. I started from zero. I count slower than ever and made my way back up. The duo is entirely silent. I get to, <laughs> I get to about $7 when suddenly I say, Drats, I lost count. I better start all over again. Really? Oh yeah, man. Why? I lost count, sir. I could be in trouble if my register doesn't have the right amount of cash, and I don't want to rip you off. It's about an hour later. My manager walks past, looks at me, I smile at him, and he looks at the counter. <laughs> he walks away without a word. I eventually count all the change, and surprisingly, they had only $18. Hmm, I think that this is $18. The duo has been dead silent. They look done for the night. I'll recount it. I ducking recounted it. <laughs> I think this is actually $19 in X cents. Without a word, the ringleader whips out a $5 bill. Seriously, you had cash? Needed to get rid of my change. 
No problem, I'll just recount this again. I want to make perfectly sure that this is $19 since I counted $18 the first time. Are you kidding me? I shake my head no, completely serious. He takes a $20 bill straight out of his pocket and throws it at me. My coworker gives the biggest WTF face. Internally, I die as well because they were smart enough to have a backup plan. And the fact that he was touching his cash in his pocket the entire time kind of messed with me. I take the cash, do the transaction, give him his change, thanked him, and wished him a good night. <laughs> the two start to put their pennies back in the Ziploc bags and I didn't help them at all. I watched them just as how they watched me. Lots of pennies dropped to the floor, but they didn't care to pick them up. It looked like their souls were sucked out of them. It was past midnight and I clocked out way past when I was supposed to. A lot of coworkers gave me a thumbs up or told me good night. Even my manager told me good job, the only two words he ever said to me. Went to bed at the dorms after such a great petty penny night and crashed. Strange to say, but I'd love to count pennies again. <laughs> Too long, didn't read. I recounted 1900 pennies like five times. Was it five times? I better count again. Petty revenge? More like penny revenge, and we have a similar story in the comments. I used to work at a grocery store as a cashier. Had two guys come in and do something similar. Just a bag of mixed coins for a case of beer. I scan the beer, check their IDs, and then they just dump a bag of mixed coins on my conveyor belt and start giggling. So I just moved my hand past the belt stop sensor and smiled as half their coins fell into the catch pan. And they started freaking out and yelling. Manager comes over and intervenes. I then slowly pull out the filthy catch pan and start digging out their lost coins and counting. The conveyor belt came on once again. There's not another place to count coins easily. And the process starts over. I end up spending about 20 minutes retrieving and sorting their coins before they just grabbed as many as possible and left without their beer. Success! And another story from Sit King. I had a couple of frat boys pull something similar to this on me one night while delivering pizza to their house. I pulled the pizza out of the sleeve warmer and they grinned and held up a freezer bag of mixed change. I took it, shook it, and said, you're short seven bucks. They looked at each other, then back to me and said, how do you know you didn't count it? I know, I can tell by the weight, you're short seven bucks. That left them in, <laughs> in a bit of a conundrum. They could either count it as the onus was on them to prove me wrong, or they could whip out seven dollars and I'd be on my way. They chose the latter. Got myself a nice 10 bucks and some change tip on that order. Manager didn't care about the coins because she was bored and loved rolling them on slow nights. Our next Reddit post is from Phyto Arch. In my senior year of high school, I started dating a guy. Let's call him John. At first, John seemed very nice. He was shy and sensitive and not at all like the other jocks on the football team. After two months of dating, he showed himself to be quite the jerk though when right after we had intercourse, he dumped me. I was hurt, but decided I was better off without him. Two weeks after we broke up, two guys from the football team came up to me during break and told me that John had been telling everyone who would listen that we'd had intercourse. They told me he went into quite a bit of detail about our supposed exploits and had told everyone that he broke up with me because I was such a slut and wanted really weird and creepy things from him. I was more than a bit hurt and super pissed. His fabricated stories meant that my reputation was ruined while he looked like some sort of hero to all his buddies. Well, I decided that I wasn't going to take it lying down. Since my reputation was already in the gutter, I decided to drag him down with me. The next time someone asked me about the breakup, I flatly told them that John broke up with me because I gave him herpes. And wouldn't you know it, that rumor spread like wildfire. By the next morning, everyone had heard it, including him. He was furious and kept telling people it wasn't true. But since he went around telling people I was a slut and bragging about all the intercourse we'd had, nobody would believe him. When he came to yell at me, my friends laughed in his face and told him to hit the road. Because of his fake herpes, John ended up going to prom alone because no girl would date him. At the end of the year, three months later, I moved states to attend a nice college. Since nobody knew me in my new town, I got to start over without any issues. John stayed behind and got to enjoy his fake herpes for years. <laughs> OP, are you sure this is petty revenge? This sounds a bit more like pro-revenge to me. Our next Reddit post is from Stay in School TTY. 
This happened about five years ago when I was a freshman in college. I had 45 minutes between classes, so I stopped by the dining hall for a quick lunch. I had nothing with me except my student ID and phone and was plugged in listening to an audiobook for class. The hall wasn't overly crowded, but not empty either. Probably 75% of the tables were taken. I loaded a tray with food and as all the two-person tables were taken, sat my tray down at an empty four-seater. Then I went to go get a drink. When I came back, not 30 seconds later, there were people sitting at my table. They'd taken all four chairs and my tray of food had kind of been pushed to one edge. I didn't know these people and the whole thing was a bit bizarre. There was another empty four-person table just like it, two tables over, so I saw no reason that they would feel the need to take this one that already had a tray of food on it. Not to mention, I'd never heard of anything like this happening before. The school was relatively small and most students were open, friendly people. So I could have picked my tray of food up and found another table or confronted them and asked what the heck, but I had a hectic day. I was starving and only had 10 minutes to eat before I needed to walk back to my studio. Long story short, I was in no mood for this. So I simply pulled up an extra chair to the end of the table and started to eat my lunch. They all sort of gave me odd looks and I just smiled and continued to listen to my book and eat. I, fin <laughs> I finished in about five to eight minutes, all the while them sitting in awkward silence. Then I got up to put my tray away and went on my merry way. I never saw those people again. <laughs> Look at the big balls on OP. That was r slash petty revenge. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button because I put out new videos every single day.